Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now, I was just about to fit start this page and I said finish then. Hold your arse it's Deborah. <laughs> and I thought why not film it. But I'm going to prep the page now. Let me just show you. This one I didn't prep it with anything. So it's just as is. And then I have got a double page spread somewhere. I probably won't be able to find it. This page I didn't prime it with anything. That was Neocore 2's. Um, I'm not going to be able to find it now. But I know which one I'm talking about. It's the one which is like sea monsters or something. Come on, I've not really done loads in this book. What's going on here? That's from this month. Anyway, I'll, while, while I'm flipping through and I'm going to I'll talk to you. But I thought I, I'm going to show you all the different things that I use to prep my pages. Uh, some things have worked really well and other things I cannot stand. But they work for for they work better for other things. So just because they don't work for colouring boots, they might work for something else. It's irritating the life out of me. Why can't I find this page? Is that a printing error though? Well, I just noticed that. Oh, there it is. Finally. Yeah. So I prepped this page with the Daniel Smith at watercolour grind, and I didn't really like it. I've got to be honest. And this stuff is expensive. It is expensive and I got the 118ml uh, tub so it's not going to last me forever, not like like this one for instance, this one's going to last me a lifetime if not longer, but this is the Liquitex Basic Acrylic Gesso. Now I can't remember whether this is a clear or a white, anyway so I spoke about this, I'm not going to use this on this specific page and the reason that I want to use a grind it's just something different just to change it up a little bit and I'm planning on doing a really nice galaxy background in the background I'm going to try my best to erase the cloud and the sun or moon whichever that's meant to be and just give myself a blank canvas but the other things that I've got uh, the Dina white clay is it media white gloss white white gloss forgive me it's like eight o'clock at night now what time are we on the third, the one that we the thirty first of May, nine o'clock. I can't film at the daytime because my daughter's on. Yeah, so this is white gesso. I think I've only used this once. I want to say. So I do need to give that one another go as well. I've got the the art basics. Now this is a clear gesso, and I'm thinking I'm going to use this. I think I am going to use this. But I have got the. Uh, satin liquid golden no i don't like this i don't like this for watercolors anyway it's not too bad when you're using uh watered down acrylic for backgrounds but for watercolor i really don't like it but it's you know it's everyone's preference and it does actually say it's for acrylic acrylic uh for, and not for watercolor so directions use alone or blend with acrylic colors to any ratio see so i've been using it the complete wrong way i need to use it with acrylics like proper acrylics and the very last one is just a cheaper one uh, and this is just I think it this one is actually a white a white gesso so first let me just get an old ish paintbrush I recently sorted out all of my paintbrushes so I'm left with very very limited old ones which is, was very very silly of me because I've not got a big one that I can use now there's an old one so yeah that was silly of me <laughs> So let me get my water ready and I'm just going to put some white acrylic over these uh, clouds. Let that start drying while I tidy this up and then come back and do the layer of gesso. How much of this have I actually used? Oh quite a bit actually. I have actually used quite a bit of that. But so, uh, sometimes, it depends whether I'm being lazy or not, I use um, these grounds for my canvases you know for when I'm doing paintings this is so mucky because I've used it for paint pouring I'm just going to go straight onto the page I'm not going to bother with the palette because I just want to just take out some of these lines you know they don't have to be completely blank I just want to get rid of them a little bit see how much I can get rid of 
Now I'm going to use masking tape as well around the edges and create a border that's purely just to uh, protect the page behind because I could use my plastic sheets and protect the page but I'm planning on using my heat gun tonight because I want to get this done in one night so uh, this either will be a really long long video or I'll have to cut it into two parts I do all the base layer first then the pencil work on top I'm not sure let's see how we get on so let's cover this I'm gonna call it a moon even though it's probably not I don't think I'll need any more than that and acrylic paint dries really really quick so once I've tidied all this up and got myself set up you know it should be dry that was my chair I think I need a new shirt. I'm getting majorly back pain. So I think it's time to invest in a decent chair, not one that looks pretty and needs to be, you know, do the job, not give me a backache. So leave that to dry while I tidy this up and then I will come back. So while getting everything out and everything sorted, I've had a bit of a whoopser. I've looked in my cabinet and this that I use, I used to use it for diamond painting, I don't anymore. But I must have let something stick to it while it's dried. Anyway, we'll just use it and see what happens. See what happens and then I've got a brush that was with some packet of something. It might have come with a pack of canvases. It's just a cheapy one and it'll do the trick. So, I've not plugged my heat gun in. I've not plugged my heat gun in. I'll do that in a minute. Masking tape. I'm going to put the masking tape on first because I want to pin down the page with my clip. And I, I'm hoping that the camera, I want to keep you all in frame because I want you to see everything that I'm doing. Yeah, if I pull it up even further, you might not be able to see the detail. So I'm just going to have to keep pulling it in and out, I think. And move my light as well. Like I said, it is coming to 9 o'clock at night. So the lighting isn't going to be fantastic. I thought that was two together then. How stupid is that? Can you see that? I thought oh, it was a decent size this. I'm never going to be able to get that off the... Ugh. That was the worst. <laughs> uh, right, let's find the end of this. There we go. There we go. Before anybody says I need to go to the nail place, I'm hopefully going at the end of the week. I think I'm either going to get my nails too cough and give them a break or I'm going to get them a lot shorter because this is a no-no, especially with the wheelchair. Not fun. Anyway, so I'm using this masking tape to create a border. Now, I don't want the whole width. I just want maybe half of it and the main reason like I said is because I want to just save the page behind as best as I can just like that and we'll do this side next that'll do try and get it in the centre as best as I can and put my finger, push it down. That might not be perfect, but I don't think I'm going to get much, much better that with, with it being in the centre. That's what I'm trying to say, <laughs> English. This isn't a page that I initially like flipped through the book and I'd go, oh, I definitely want a colour in that one. But I thought because there's such a large background that I'd get away with doing one of my galaxies in it like for instance this one I mean there's a decent amount there but you've got all the bits in between with the feathers can't be bothered with that can't be bothered with a, a detailed background with that one acrylic paint will be your best friend oh. there you go line that up as best as I can right 
my tip with the masking tape as well is don't leave it on for days and days and days like I did because that's it's more prone to rip if you do that and use the heat gun as well to slightly melt the glue when you're ready to take it off have I been calling it masking tape it's washi, washi tape and just use these clips on the edges just to keep it as not flat as I possibly can I've not even picked out what watercolours that I'm going to use but I need to do all this gessoing first so it says clear transparent uh, clear matte ground acrylic to use apply on surface with a paintbrush to prepare a working surface can be mixed with other mediums for, cu for customisation coloured grounds non-toxic so we'll see I've not used this in a little while but I've got all these different art supplies, so why am I not using them? Let's just, just go for it. I don't know if that's going to be too much. Let's spread it around. The one thing I don't want and don't like, I don't like having brush marks. You know, you can see the strokes of the brush. So but just put a little bit more on and this might be completely wrong the way that I'm doing it but this is the way that I do it and it seems to work so let me try the roller now and I know you know I'm not going to get the best effect because this is completely solid now I do need to get another one I mean I could pick it off but I'd be here forever so it is what it is just lightly roll this over the top It might actually give the, the page a bit of a texture, you know what I mean? I've just had a brilliant idea. I've just had the best idea, right. I'm going to finish this and let it dry and then I'm going to add loads and loads of textures to the water. That's what I'm going to do. So yeah, that was a great idea, but in hindsight, <laughs> I'm still going to do it. It's just going to take me longer. I've got this Distress Grit Paste by Tim Holtz. And I've just read the directions and it says in capital letters do not use heat tool to dry so I'm gonna have to put it on I'm gonna have to put it on and then probably come back tomorrow evening and continue it because I genuinely I'm not going to use that heat gun if it tells me not to that scares me a little bit so I'll just have to put it to one side um, so yeah it'll just take me a little bit longer to make this video which is fine but it says this it's a grit paste, uh, dimensional medium designed to pr provide a textured effect on a variety of craft and mixed media surfaces. Apply with a palette knife or paintbrush directly onto a porous or non-porous surface for a unique effect. Dries uh, to a textured matte finish that can be colourised with your favourite distress inks, crayons, paint or stain. Do not use a heat, heat, here, there, there, heat gun tool. So, I'll try with the paintbrush first. I just wanted to add a little bit, you know. Let me bring you in a bit closer because you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing at all. So, that should be okay. Oh, I wanted to film tonight. Never mind. So... I'm just putting that glob there, that blob, <laughs> just to uh, give me somewhere to work with. And I'll come back and take bits from that. If it was the daytime and it was a nice sunny day, I bet you I would have got away with putting it outside. But no, it is raining, it is windy, and it's late at night, so no chance. I don't think I've actually used this on the channel before and it is quite an interesting product. You know what, I might try a, a watercolour and then maybe some inks like it says. Uh, you, if you've got stencils, you can put this through stencils and then it gives it like a raised up effect. That's quite cool as well. Oh, 
want to see what it's going to look like now though. <laughs> the patience. I've learned a lot of patience recently through diamond painting so, you know, another day won't kill me. It's a good job I used an old paintbrush. Stick down. Let's try some. Can you see how thick it is? It looks a little bit like icing sugar. I mean, don't eat it. <laughs> but it does look like icing sugar. And I'd be mindful as well, if you're going to pull the page behind this one, it is going to be bumper. I know you can't see on camera but there's a teeny tiny bit up here, I don't want to move the camera just for this little blob. I think that's most of the areas covered now. I'm going to raise it in certain areas, I'm going to clean my brush off in certain areas I'm going to add it a little bit more raised up the paper is probably screaming at me at this point what are you doing to me I'm not watercolor paper stop actually it's better if you mix it with a bit of water it's easier I've just popped a tiny bit of water in there. This makes it easier to spread around. It might be an idea once you've covered the rest of the page then use this because I would have gone over like little bits of this you know if it make it look like the water's causing waves and it's splashing upwards that might have been a better idea but like I said I've not used this for a long time and I think I've used it once. I'm going to put the lid on it. It was really hard to get the lid off it as well. So you'll see me tomorrow when this is completely dry which is a pain in the bottom. But it is what it is. Right, I'm back. I'm excited to do this now. I've got everything set up. I'm going to work on the waves first. And I've pulled out my Prima watercolour, the is it current set. Yeah, the current set. I thought, you know what, I'll give these an, another try. Um, I got some cheap watercolour brushes off Amazon a little while ago. And I thought I'm better off using my cheap ones because this is so textured now. Mm. Now I have pulled out as well my heat gun. I'm a bit worried about using that after what it said in the instructions with this. But I'm sure now that it's dry it should should be okay. For the galaxy background up here I've uh, pulled out the white nights, white night paints. So I could probably just keep these out now actually. I don't know why I'm keeping them in the box. I like to keep boxes, I might be able to put washi tape in this box, <laughs> might be a good idea. So I'll pick out a couple of sizes, so we'll go for a really big size, whoops a daisy, 18 might be a little big, oh, we'll, we'll pull a few out, I'll pull them all out, <laughs> pull them all out while I'm here. Um, how many is meant to be in this set, have I used one or two, because I'm sure I haven't, let's see on the back. Sure, not how many? Three, four, five, six, seven. I don't see another one. I'm sure I've not used these yet. Maybe like in passing I've used them. Not swatching. So, <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous about this now. Whoops. I'm all about the whoopsies. My husband's watching Britain's Got Talent. That's what, that's what you can hear. So I've pre-wet all the colours 
now I'm going to have to put a little bit more in because it's been probably been left a little bit too long but I want to start off with the deep sea and just base the whole thing with that which is this shade now, I'm not worrying too much about these ones mixing together I'm not as um, fussy with these ones let's get my water ready and then I'm going to go in with a size 10 I think now because these are cheap water colour brushes I don't imagine that they're going to be amazing but you know they might just oh god I don't like look at this they might just do what I'm after for now right so it is super duper textured I'm going to need plenty of paint so I'm glad that I chose this palette and this brush actually I'm going to mix a bit of the algae colour in there see if I can get a good mix more water more water let's just see I've not played with this medium in a long, long time and I think it was a good idea for this page. Now, am I thinking that it's a good idea? No, probably not after seeing this, but, you know, let's just give it a chance. There's too much of that alligator there. So let's go back in with the deep sea. Pop that here. You can really see the texture on it. What I might do, I have got some... Um, I've got a couple of distress inks, um, but I could use like a glittery ink maybe and see how this reacted because this so far is not playing ball. So let's just see how this goes. I was really excited about getting to this today, really excited. I think can I risk filming in the afternoon, but I thought no, I don't want banging. Well, let's see the banging. Oh, my husband laughing, so oh, you can have the laughing. I'm sure you don't mind. Yeah, that's a boulder. But it's like it's sucking the watercolour up. I know it's not marketed to use as watercolour. I was just curious. Just curious to see how it acted. And I'm wondering, I'm just going to go over that boulder. Ugh, can I use... A heat gun I'm hoping so I'm gonna dip into it is blue fin this one I'm really trying to get in there if it's gonna allow me to and then we've got this little bit area up here as well Add more water. I'll use the heat gun in a minute and see if I can do another layer or two. Will it allow me? I'm so glad I didn't use my expensive watercolour brushes now. Oops. You might be better off actually with a bit of acrylic paint on this, you know. While my brush is still wet, keep the heat going on it. Let's add some more colour. I am managing to cover it as long as I put plenty of water down by the roots of it. Plenty of paint and plenty of water colour. This colour is blue whale. So that separates as you paint on it and it looks like it's melting as well with this so I'm going to have to be a little bit more curve on ambient. Well, we wanted the crashing of the waves, didn't we? <laughs> We've definitely got that. I 
that's working better actually doing it like that. I'm going to leave it like that and then once I've got it dry I'm going to pop a little bit of Distress Ink over the top and see if I can get you know, the lighter white, it's like a really, I don't know if I've got a light a blue shade, I'm really not sure, I'll move this palette now, whoa that's hot, that is super duper hot, move that over there, let's get this dry. It doesn't like the heat gun. I can see it bubbling up. Bubbling up a lot. So I'm not going to use any more watercolour or any more heat gun on that. I'll use the heat gun up here because I've not, I've not done that surface. But once it's cooled down because it is mega hot to the touch. I'll come back and use a little bit of uh, Distress Ink. I've not used Distress Ink in some time. So this is going to be interesting. I've pulled out two colours here. I think I'm going to use the salty ocean, but I have pulled out the peacock feathers just for a little variation. And I've got one of these, I don't know what they're called, but they've got tiny little sponges on the end. And then my usual blender. So I'll start off with the blender and then I might add a little bit of the peacock feathers with that little sponge. So it's cooled down now. Yeah, it bubbles like crazy when you use the heat gun. I have no idea what's in that stuff, but yeah, don't use a heat gun. Even when it's completely dry, don't use a heat gun. So the way that I do it, I just pop it onto the ink pad and go in circular motions and it's all on the pad that I I just want to see if I can not get rid of the white, but like stain it and it's working. See? Because I will end up going back in and adding some um, white acrylic like for splashes in the water that's my idea anyway well this is well and truly a mixed media page now isn't it I promise you it looks better in real life because you can see all the bumps and stuff on the page. So I'll keep that open all around. I'll keep that blender because I might end up using that blender. I've seen a couple of people using these but they've never worked for me. So it just goes to show just because you see somebody using it and it works for them doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. I don't like them. I don't like them. Let's try with this. I don't want to add too much just a little bit and I think I'll come back to doing like the waves and stuff uh, when I've finished everything else just in case I want to bring it up here so I've got bits everywhere whoops I'm all about the whoopsies aren't I and they've literally stuck to the page so all the bits that have fell off the bottom here have stuck to the top here that's probably because I put that gesso down that's what I'm thinking anyway so for the background up here I would usually go for like a pink pink purple sky now I'm thinking more like purples and navy blues so this is that palette I'm not going to bring the camera out but this is the palette that I'm using I'll spray the colours I haven't got my swatch chart handy uh, and some purples um, and then we'll go with an 8 brush we used the 10 last time so we'll go with an 8 let's get my water redder oh these are super stiff when you've not used them wow there you go it's like you have to separate the bristles so let's just 
just do this that might be a little bit light for what I want a little bit more water see so it's not completely erased all the um, the line out in the background but I'm hoping that I'll be able to cover it up with this sky that was a little bit more turquoise than I wanted see and he really needs to do my swatch charts again let's mix that around so it's, it's not acting as how I want it to this uh, gesso I like to have time to be able to blend the colours together where I'm just pop, plopping the colour down and it's just sitting on top of the paper which you know I should have expected that really I just didn't think let's go into that pinky purple colour I might have to do a few layers on this you know to get the effect that I want I want the lighter pink that might be a bit there you go that's better this is probably the favorite my favorite one out of the whole palette actually I can hear my daughter moving around, she best not wake up. Let's move some of this colour around here. So yeah, I'll use the heat gun on this layer and then I'll go in with another one. Because I'm not really enjoying how this is leaking. try and get this colour as spread out as I can because then it will dry quicker right. say patience is a bird tree <laughs> and then what I'll do as well when I'm adding the white to the bottom I'll add the stars to the top See it's lightening now because it's drying. I'm not going to get it completely dry, I'll just get it dry enough that I can go over with another layer. I think we need some more blues and we've got purple here as well this is a really lovely purple now I don't tend to really like using black but I think it's going to be needed for this one I've just got a funny feeling just going with that dark the neva See how it separates more or less instantly. See here, I'm just not liking that. But I'll test it out so you don't have to. Going with that pink again. Oops, I'm all fingers and thumbs today. I do apologise. that and let's go in with another blue see how it see that's not pigmented enough mm. that's better let's go with more water I've got a funny feeling I'm not going to be able to save this it's just going to be really, really messy. 
I don't want to have to go in with acrylic. Not at this point. What I might do actually is pull a little bit of the colour up with a tissue, not a tissue, a uh, just an old tea towel and just see if I can so, sort of salvage it because it is not blending how I like my galaxies to blend so if it's not working like that let's just try, try a different technique and that's probably <laughs> probably better actually <laughs> so I'm going to add a little bit more water to some areas now this is just water from my tub I, you know it's, I'm not adding any more paint it's just whatever's whatever's there You know what, that's a million times better. Let's add a little bit more. And then pull that back up. To be fair. I don't mind that. <laughs> I think I've got away with that. There's a little bit at the top here that I really don't like. So let's wet that. Pull that colour up as well. Some of that turquoise is poking through now. So if I lift you up, you can see the mess that I've got on the table. But I think that's better than before. It's better than before. So what I'm going to do is I will base the mountains, uh, yeah I'll base all the mountains in one colour and I'll probably have to make this a two part video and then we'll, when you come back for the next one I'll add all the details to these little guys here and then add the stars to the background and then all the waves as well and give you a really detailed look. I will try, I'll bring the camera down and try and show you this texture that I mean because it is pretty smart to be honest it is pretty smart so I just want a really light wash of something so I'll go in with a size 6 I could do a change in my water as well um, I'm just going to go in with a grey I think and just you know play it really safe the reason that I'm doing it is just I want to get rid of the white of that paper um, I'll add the smallest amount of blue as well and really really water it down let me just test it, yep perfect just a little bit of something just to get rid of the white of the paper it's literally turned into a three day page this hasn't it, it's a single page spread what's going on? what's going on? So just popping this off on just I just want to get rid of the white of the paper because sometimes I don't think that helps with the colour choices and gets you a little bit nervous. What do I put down there? This will bleed through I think. I really do think that it's bled through. <laughs> I'll be shocked if it's not. But I do like a good experiment and to be fair I don't mind that background and I think once we've added the stars it, it'll really pop so yeah I suppose you know using the the gesso just because it didn't do what I initially wanted it to do it might be able to do something else for me that watercolour paper can't do and you won't know will you until you test that We'll leave the little bolt because I'm really unsure about what colour to do that uh, little guy. But yeah, come back for part two, we'll finish off the galaxy background and then finish off these. I did promise as well that I'd show you this, so I'll bring you down. So you can get a really good idea here if I bring you right close down. The texture. 
of that paper. Let's see if it makes a noise. See? It's like really rough, sort of like sandpaper maybe. So I think once we've added the uh, the white acrylic paint over that, I think it'll look pretty smart. And it'll just be, it'll be a unique page anyway, nonetheless. So yeah, like I said, come back for part two. So please do subscribe, pop on your notifications and it will let you know when I upload part two. So thank you very much for watching. Let's clean this up and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.